what is up guys welcome back to another video on the channel in today's upload we're going to talk about my e60 m5 now we all know how i feel about this car at least if you've been following along in the uploads that we've done so far i mean i think it's the best m5 ever made i mean it looks epic at least in my opinion it sounds epic with the new exhaust that we put on there the reason i bought it is of course because it has a naturally aspirated v10 that was specifically made for this car bmw didn't put it in any other car except for you know the m6 and you know the coupe version and so on and they don't make cars like this anymore at least bmw will never make another sedan with a v10 if they'll ever make another car in general with a v10 that's just not how the automotive industry is uh moving along nowadays now before i bought the car i did do some research and uh yes i did <laughs> find out that the car you know doesn't have the best reputation it is known to be unreliable it has uh, certain things that are pretty much doomed to fail on this car it's not about if it's about when <sighs> so in today's video, we're gonna talk about some uh, personal issues that I have with the car. Some of these issues are very nitpicky and tiny, but they're just annoying. The other issues are a bit more serious. So, here are six things I absolutely hate about my E60 M5. So, you might have uh, thought that uh, I was going to mention the classic, oh, it's horrible on gas, but you know what? That's not part of the list here. That was something that, you know, I knew coming into this, you're not going to get good gas mileage out of a naturally aspirated V10. That's not why I bought this car. And by the way, it does get horrible gas mileage around 10 uh, miles per gallon around town. But it's not the fuel consumption that I absolutely despise about this car. It is how much oil it sucks. It's like giving a, a kid a juice box or something. It sucks oil like no other car that I've ever experienced. For those of you who watched the delivery video of the car and how I drove it back from Philadelphia and noticed that uh, the oil level in the car was just going down as I was driving, that was new to me. I mean, I had been told that the car sucks oil, but I didn't know that it was gonna be this much. And then I get this warning message saying that I need to put half a quart or a quart of oil in the car and of course i mean being a new owner i've only had the car for a few hours completely freak out drive home long story short i put half a quart of oil in the car and then all of a sudden it tells me that it's overfilled and then i start reading online they're like yeah be careful so you don't overfill you know the car kind of lies to you and tells you that you know you need half a quart but you don't really need half a quart so when you own an e60 m5 you have to be driving around with a quart of oil in the car at all times. You cannot take this car on a road. I mean, you can take it on a road trip, but you gotta bring a lot of oil because it just slurps it up like nobody's business. And the E60 M5 takes 10W60 oil. It's a supercar oil on here. So the first day when this happened, I drove to O'Reilly's Auto Parts. They didn't have 10W60. I drove to uh, another auto zone or whatever it was. They didn't have it either. And then at the third place, they looked at me like I was stupid. And they're like, are you sure you need 10W60? And I'm like, yes, that's what, they're, they're like, what kind of car is it? I'm like, it's a BMW. They're like, what? And then there was one guy who was like, wait, let me check way in the back. And he found 10W60 oil. Now, I'm gonna start the car up here. I recently got an oil change, and that was at around 63,400 miles. So I've driven about 800 miles. When we did the oil change, my uh, oil meter here was showing 1.1, which is actually slightly, slightly, slightly over what you should be having in the car. But we figured, you know, it's not really going to do all that much. The car sucks oil. Anyhow, look at this. 800 miles later, I'm at 0, 0.0. So I'm below the level that you're supposed to be in this car, which is minimum of 0 0.2. For some weird reason, it's not telling me that I need to add more oil. The first time when it was at 0 0.2, it was telling me, add more oil. You know, it's very important, like this scary message here up on the screen, but now it's not. So, the first thing I really, really, really hate about this car is the amount of oil it consumes, and also how finicky it is. It'll give me a warning message one day, the next day, it's gone. You don't really know what to trust. It's just very, very finicky. 
So, the second thing I hate about this car pertains to the oil as well, and that is this stupid, stupid, stupid system that BMW uses on this car where they have an electronic dipstick. I mean, I don't even know if that's what it's called, but it's an electronic dipstick, and that's it. As we walk up to the engine bay here and uh, we pan the camera across, so you might be able to see that there is no conventional dipstick in this car. <laughs> like, what? Even a mechanical noob like myself know how to check oil with a dipstick. This car doesn't have it. You have to trust BMW's extremely idiotic electronic dipstick. So when it's doing its flakiness up and down, and these 60 M5 owners, you guys can attest to this, this is the dumbest system ever. I mean, can you sort of get used to it? Yeah, I guess, but it's still stupid. So the second thing I absolutely hate about this car is that it doesn't have a conventional dipstick. So the third thing that I hate about this car, and yes, we have uh, yet to leave the engine bay as you might notice. And that is plain and simple reliability. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I was warned before I bought the car. I've been warned after I bought the car. It just has a bad reputation and BMW obviously will never admit to this, but uh, there's a lot of things in the engine that is flawed just in the way they were designed. But the main three things that again, is not a question of if, it's a question of when they will break are rod bearings, the Venos pump and the throttle body actuators. So basically the third thing that I hate about this car is that you're constantly always worried. Now the reason I bought this specific car here is that one, it was a manual. So another uh, honorable mention that you know doesn't apply to my car is the crappy SMG transmission which also has a horrible reputation but I don't really have to worry about that because again my car is one out of 1300 that is the six-speed manual secondly it was a one owner car so I figured maybe I'll get lucky and won't have any of these issues at all now regarding the rod bearings there's really no way to know if they're bad or not until you pick pretty much half the engine apart and get the bearings out. So I do have plans of replacing the rod bearings at some point here just for peace of mind. So at the moment, I don't think I have any issues with the rod bearings, but then again, how can I be sure? There's no way to find out unless you take them out. Now one issue that I do have though that uh, started happening shortly after I bought the car is this. <laughs> I have a grinding sound and it's coming from this side mainly and it comes and it goes it stops and it comes back and that started happening just shortly after I bought the car I didn't hear it when I was test driving the car and I didn't hear it right when I got home either it was a couple days later I know it's vague and it's hard to capture on camera but it's a grinding noise and I've been looking around online on the forums and I'm not really finding that's a grinding sound. I haven't really found anything specific on the forums regarding this grinding sound, which kind of worries me even more. Is this something that's specific to my car? I talked to some other BMW experts and they they can't pinpoint exactly what it is just by listening to it, but they're thinking that maybe uh, it could be something with Venos. But when the car is really cold and I start it up in the morning and I drive it around, I don't hear this. It's after the car warms up and I've turned it off. Let's say I go into a store, come back, turn the car back on. See, now it's kind of subsiding a little bit. That's when this sound comes on and I can't figure out what it is. At least I don't know at this moment. So the third thing, and I would uh, probably say that that's the main thing that I hate about this car, is that it's unreliable and you always kind of have this worried feeling like, is the Venos gonna happen? Is the rod bearings gonna happen to me? Is the throttle body actuator is gonna happen to me? And now I think uh, I might be starting to have a Venos issue with the car. All right, so for now we're done with the engine compartment. And the fourth thing 
that annoys the crap out of me with this car. It is pretty minor, but it's one of those things where you just left scratching your head thinking, you know, why are they doing this? Why do they have to make it this complicated? And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna have to start the car up one more time. There we have that lovely grinding again. But the fourth thing is regarding the climate. So what we can see right here is that we have fan speed, we have defrost buttons and so on, air conditioning, uh, we got temperature right here. But there is no way with these simple buttons here where you can direct where the air actually flows. To do that, you have to go into this annoying iDrive system and you have to click to climate. So that's one click. Then you have to go to vent settings and then you have to click down to either the driver or the passenger. Then you have to use this annoying turn dial knob here. And then you have to go up here and then you have to turn the dial and then you have to direct where the air flows. And this is just so stupid. Why couldn't there be a button like it is on all other cars, normal cars where you just click, yeah, I want it to blow, you know, in my face. I want it to blow down on my feet. I want it to just be a defroster. But instead, BMW with their stupid iDrive system decides that, yeah, we'll just make it extremely complicated and make people click 10 more times to do one simple feature. So that is one nitpicky little feature that I absolutely hate about this car. So the fifth thing that I hate about this car and actually bothers me is cubby and storage compartment. So we do have a little one here in uh, the door panel, which I guess is fine. But then, as you guys can see here, we don't have regular cup holders. We have these that pop out here. And I mean, it's just like if you have two drinks and you drive them by yourself, yeah, you gotta, you know, reach over here, which can be kind of annoying, but that's not actually one of the things that do annoy me. I do think these are, are pretty cool, but you don't have any right here. So this stupid iDrive system, rotary turn dial knob and these two buttons, you know, this is a lot of waste of space right here. So what we have in the middle, you open this. First time I saw this, I was like, wow, this is one of those old cell phones, you know, that was like super expensive option back in the day where you had a phone that was actually connected to the car, but no, it's not. It's this tiny little cubby space here where you can see I just keep coins and stuff in here. What you can do though, by the way, is you can open up here and yeah, it's a little more here, but it's, it's super tiny. So my gripe and one of those tiny little things that just bugs the crap out of me is why do they come up with this? This is just so stupid. Remove this clunky thing here and have just a deeper cubby space. It's just, why do they complicate things? Just like they did with the climate controls here. You have to go in here and click like 10 extra freaking then turn this and to be able to get some warm air on my freaking feet. Like this annoys the crap out of me. Why do you do this BMW? It's stupid. <laughs> All right, so the last and final thing that we're gonna bitch about regarding my E60 M5. It's not the sound because it sounds amazing. <laughs> I absolutely love driving this car and just listening to it and the power delivery that it has from the naturally aspirated V10. I mean, if I was extremely picky, I'd bitch about the, you know, how it only has top end torque and there's like no torque whatsoever down low. So, you know, you have to wait till, you know, you're going like hundred miles an hour. That's when the car really starts pulling, but I'm not gonna do that. It's something else. The last thing that we're gonna talk about here is actually the sunroof, because this is another flaw that you know BMW just did with this car. They didn't design it correctly. And I've uh, had this confirmed by other E60 owners, whether they have an M5 or not. Is I mean, like today for instance, it's winter. Yeah, it's kind of cold outside, but it's a beautiful day. It's sunny. And if you open up this shade here, it brings in a lot more light into the uh, cabin. But I don't know if the GoPro is picking this up. If you open up this shade, it sounds like the sunroof is cracked, like it's not completely closed. You have this whooshing sound the whole time. I know the exhaust is kind of loud. I don't know, again, I don't know if the GoPro is picking it up. So we'll film it with the other camera. It's just 
one of those little, little things that just leaves you scratching your head being like, this is annoying. Just fix it. Like, I want to have the shade open. I don't want to have to have it closed. Like, it's a huge difference. And again, I know this is a nitpicky little thing, but it gets annoying after a while, especially for a poor little YouTuber like myself that needs good audio. It's an even bigger problem. Like, I don't want this whooshing sound. I don't want you guys to have to hear it either. So yeah, that is the last uh, first world problem that I'm having with my car. And I don't really wanna, you know, bitch for any longer in today's video. So with that being said, we're gonna end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already, and you feel like you want to, Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. We don't do any burnouts, Mike. Oh, there it is.